I, James, founded and work for HPI, but do not represent them or any of their opinions. Welcome to Season 8, Episode 313 of the Frillo Bros Tech Podcast. Today is November the 14th, 2017. Every week, we definitively answer one question about the future of tech. To do that, we take into account many factors, including the companies involved, the people working for them, their marketing campaigns, and of course, the technology they're developing. I'm Matthew Dean Furlow, and unlocking this phone with this face is my brother, James Furlow. That's right. I got the new iPhone X. That's right. Oh, man. Man, let's not be dumb about this. I got the X. It's uh, it's cool. It's um, it's skinnier than my old phone because I had the the seven plus before that, and um, I don't know, kind of like it. The whole glass back thing, no button, which I like instantly got used to. No big deal. Yeah. What about that notch? A big old. Big old, big old notch. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. That's the one thing everyone asks about, you know, which Apple made a big deal about it. And everyone's like, what about the notch? How is it? And honestly, I, uh, the way I would describe it is, it, it, I actually think of it the other way around, where it's like, oh no, I got a couple ears as opposed to a notch. It feels like Apple figured out how to cheat and give me a little bit more screen as opposed to, oh, they had to notch out part of the screen. You know, especially like 99.9% of the apps. Again, we're just excluding you're, some video stuff. Such a fanboy, man. Well, I just know if I were to, if I were to turn on a YouTube video, it wouldn't fill the whole screen anyways. It would, there'd be black bars no matter what because the standard video resolution doesn't go all the way to the end. If you open up a picture and you want to see the whole picture, it doesn't, there's bars on the, bottom and top. I mean, there's very rarely is there a time where you're like, oh man, the notch is in my way. It just doesn't happen. So I, I look at it and you're like, nah, for most apps, I, I know our audience, it's like ears shaking my head, but I'm just shaking my head in disappointment, man. Just, you can't, I, if you, if you, anybody who uses it for a short amount of time will go, oh, it's not a big deal at all. It really isn't. Yeah, I know I, there was so much hoopla about it, like, oh, the notch. I'm like, yeah, it turns out it's not a big deal. Well, yeah, I I, I, I mean, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I totally hear you. I, you know, I go back and forth because my problem isn't even necessarily like a screen, a real estate thing, because you're right. From a real estate perspective, if they had made it the entire length of the top, um, then you would have just lost all that space and you'd have a bevel there. Um they so really and truly by putting it where they put it they give you a little bit of extra screen that you can yeah. fit notifications up at the top like i get where you're coming from my problem is i just it's really hard for me to not see it as ugly <laughs> um but you know what i would think i would do honestly if i were if i had an iphone 10 um i would uh i'd probably use a black backdrop like a all black backdrop for two reasons i guess Number one um just from a from a from the aesthetic of the notch it would go away but there's an even better reason it's because the oled instead of where my phone which is an lcd in order to achieve blacks it lights up the entire black panel and then it blocks out where the blacks are which is why you don't have super deep blacks whereas with the oled anywhere where there's black you're actually not using any electricity and there's a trick that can really that I was reading about that can really extend the, the battery life on the X, where huh. you basically turn it to a grayscale and then um, and then set it as like a and you invert some colors, you go to grayscale, and you basically set the background to, to black, and you end up with this like you can really extend the life because you because at that point you're only using um, a small fraction of the actual LEDs. <laughs> um, is the trick, but I guess I only like it by the end of the day, my battery is at 50%. I'm, I don't know. I don't have battery problems. You don't <laughs> use your phone. That's the problem. That's... Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyways, my point is I'd probably just use a black background for that reason. Cause it'd save a lot of power, but yeah, but it's interesting. The number one question everyone asks about is they all ask about the notch. How's that going? And it's honestly, it's not a big deal. I'm sure. Yeah. But you know what, James, it's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about something a little more exciting than that. Uh, so the question we're going to want to ask this week, answer this week is, 
Uh, is Facebook going to be going to be liable like the tobacco industry was for the damage that they did? Um, you might be thinking, mm. wow, that sounds like a bit of a jump. Like, how would we get there? But I have a, I have a theory. And um, it started because Sean Parker had an interview um, on Axios uh, last week. And he, there's a couple of quotes I'm going to read to you. Um, some important excerpts. Okay. Uh, first, when Facebook was getting going, uh, I had these people who would come up to me and say, I'm not on social media. And I would say, okay, you know, you will be. And then they would say, no, no, no. I value my real life interactions. I value the moment. I value presence. I value intimacy. And I would say, well, you'll, we'll get you eventually. That's um, so true. I know. Uh, and then he said, I don't know if I really understood the consequence of what I was saying because the unintended consequence of a network when it grows to a billion or two billion people and it literally changes your relationship with society, with each other. It probably interferes with productive productivity in weird ways. God only knows what it's doing to our children's brains, which is Dude, good question, which is something a heck of a thing to say. Uh, well, and that's and, the kind of thing that we've talked about before. And I, oh man, gosh, this was probably years ago, but it was around, um, there's this question that's happening with text messaging where kids, when they're going through difficult times, they have questions. It used to be in the olden days, that they would talk the olden days of 2002. <laughs> yeah. They would talk to their parents and that's who they would seek advice from, you know, sage people who have information. Cause that's, that was who they had access to. And now today, like they're going through issues and they're getting advice from their peers via text messaging or Snapchat or Facebook, or, you know, it's some sort of social media. Yeah. And the advice they get from your peer, from your peers is not, nearly as mature and wise as what you know in generalities as what you would get from your parents and which, yeah i mean and there's so much of unintended which consequences is one, which is one aspect of this and there's 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 more oh yeah um, the thought process that went into building these applications he said facebook being the first of them what about myspace was all about <laughs> how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible well of what, course i mean say, that's how they I mean, that's how they roll it. Wait, wait a second. Um, his, he answers his own question. Uh, what that means, uh, and that means that what we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while because someone liked or because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever, and that's going to get you to contribute more content, and that's going to get you more likes and contents. It's a social validation feedback loop, uh, exactly the kind of thing a hacker like myself would come up with because of your, uh, you're exploiting a vulnerability in human psychology. Uh, the inventors, creators, it's me, it's Mark, it's Kevin, it's Sistorm on Instagram, it's all these people understood this consciously, and we did it anyways. Yeah. Okay. He's just using language that I think is uh, problematic from a legal perspective. <laughs> um, one of the one of the reasons why you get into the you know what, what I mean. I, I hate to be this way, but do we get to go after Nintendo? Do we get to go after Sony and Microsoft? I, I mean, well, okay. I think the, what I makes think them the argue, special? Well, I think what you would say is yes you do if there is a uh, a demonstrable if they're at fault um and so it's like the you know the tobacco industry was at fault because people died and they lied about the it was the twofold they they knew it was addictive they made it because it was addictive they lied about the addictive nature of it and people died as a result um so those first couple of points, I think, kind of line up with, with Facebook, but this is where it gets a little bit difficult because I've got a couple of articles here. And this is, we're just at the very tip of this scientific study. It might turn out that these things are not totally, um, you know, they, science might tell us something else later on, but this is where we're going. Uh, can you get addicted to social media? Yes. Easter for now, is it's kind of hard to tell. No, but, it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's kind of where the science is pointing. Is yes, we're starting to study it. There is a, definitely a suggestion that you can get addicted to social media for the very reasons that Sean Parker was talking about. It's that social validation feedback loop. It's actual chemical changes to your brain. It's physiological yeah. changes 
due to uh, chemicals that are being released in your brain. It's not addictive like heroin is addictive, except that there's a lot of science that would suggest that a big portion of heroin's addictive nature is a psychological willing, like you're already there to be addicted to heroin. Like it's actually sometimes uh, one of the big, what, what am I giving with this? With opioids, one of the big difference between whether or not you get addicted to it, because like morphine is a much more powerful drug than heroin. Yeah. Why is it that morphine doesn't addict more people when it's regularly given in hospitals? And it has a lot to do with your psychology, honestly, um, is what a lot of science has shown. And then, um, so the answer, so that's going to be a big question that needs to be answered. But the other one that's interesting, I, I got an NBC uh, article about suicide rates among teen girls are rising. There's a tremendous number of demographic changes in including really terrible ones like that, that have made a dramatic change in the last 10 years. Um, generally, we break generations into 20-year gaps because you can't really tell the difference between a group of you know, people 10 years apart, demographically speaking. Okay. Um, whereas the social media generation, like the full alive for the entire length of the internet, you've seen some huge demographic changes like... Um, uh, suicide rates really spiking. And so the question there is, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into it, but undeniably the role of social media is there. That is a contributing factor. Um, you know, cancer killed a lot more people. Smoking was part of it. They knew. I, bl I blame Greece. I don't know. That's just me. Um, <laughs> Greece lightning or the, 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 the country. Oh. For yeah, you know, they went bankrupt at one point, and I, I, you know, I, yeah, correlation versus causation are is what they're running up against here because they're going, well, there was one really big change in culture, and you know, we're seeing this other really big change in culture, so I don't know, maybe they're related, well, and I and I get that yeah. they're correlated, then they can't ever prove causation, and that's the fun part about statistics. It's really well, you okay. particularly that way. Statistics can't prove causation, but what if we get to the point? The whole point of this is that statistics validates how many people it's, a, it's happening to. If there is a scientific connection, though, which is the point of the scientific method, is to uncover not just correlation but causation. So yeah, and I guess I should I should be clear. Like I I think in my heart of hearts, yes, I think you can get addicted, and yes, I do think social media is related to the rise of angst and suicide rates and things like that. And yes, I do think that the social media creators, inventors, and, and we'll, and we'll get even deeper into this uh, after the break. I, I think they, I don't know if they knew what they were doing. I don't think they cared. I don't think that was a question that, I mean, they did ask, how can we get more page views? More page views equals more advertising equals a bigger business equals awesome. Yeah. You know, and they were like, fundamentally sharing is good because we're not doing it in person anymore. Exactly. And, you know, and they didn't step back and, and, and we'll talk more examples about that. I think like the whole fake news thing is related to that same thought process or, you know, the lack of controls. Uh, but before we dive even deeper, so this this uh, this episode is brought to you by stopwatches. They're really oh, they're stop really watches. They're, they're really convenient because they allow you to have shorter podcasts. And I got one running right. right now. Me too. I have one running in, in my browser, which is kind of neat. You can, Whoa. Just, you can just Google the words "stop" and "watch," and here's, a stopwatch will appear in front of you. you have to here's, the here's mine. Here's mine going. Oh, that's a pretty good stopwatch. Just, just like that. Yeah, it's oh. my iPad. It's a fancy stopwatch. Some would argue it's kind of like a pocket watch. Ah. Actually, that that one's not. It's my my iPhone X that is brand new and awesome. It's more like a pocket watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So if you don't have a pocket watch, go out or a stopwatch, go out and get one. It, um, you do have one if you're listening to this. <laughs> so hey, thanks. Use it regularly. Yeah. It's a great tool to have in your arsenal. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oftentimes you can get to it from some sort of quick connection you know mm. quick swipe whatever access thing exactly 
Oh boy, I blew that. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, to me this this sort of to me it, I, I hear, okay. So so, this so is, Zuckerberg this, is evil, this, huh? This is you know, my, this is not the first time I've read this this week, right? So this is my <laughs> first thought on this. Sean Parker comes across as a bit of a bit of a piece of work, dude. Um, he is, and he's always selling something. He may not tell you what it is, but he's always selling something. Yeah. He, he, and one of the things, because what this positions him as, like his description of this is self-incriminating, but it's simultaneously self-incriminating, but self-aggrandizing. It's like, these are all things that people have only discovered. It's like a humble brag. Interesting. Yeah. And it's like, and it's, (laughs) I find it really annoying because he's basically saying, all of you simple people who are, puppets. Now, are now addicted to our platform, you didn't know this until very recently. And now that you know it, I'm just going to tell you, oh, we knew it all along. Which brings me back to the, I have You're a- You're a liar! Yeah, I, I have a feeling that, that a number of guys like Kevin Systrom and Mark Zuckerberg are both sitting there with their hands in their, in their you know, or their heads in their hands just thinking, you got to be kidding me. Like that's, yeah, we were trying to figure out how to increase engagement. Yeah. We knew there would be consequences yeah. to it, but we didn't expect. Yeah. That. We knew if we could get you seven friends, you'd keep coming back for life. Yeah. We knew all that. Right. Yeah. There, there are certain things that we knew, but the, the, the broader, like the broader consequences of that, we didn't foresee, but the way that, that he's the way that, that he makes it sound, he's like, yeah, we like, well, he says it literally, uh, we understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's it's basically like that's his statement. It's like we knew what we were doing, and we did it anyways. Um, and which goes back. I to don't you. know. I don't think they. I mean, I don't. Maybe they did, but they didn't even talk about it. Like that wasn't. I oh well, maybe it was. Maybe it was one of those like hot tubs with some bubbly wine. You know late night conversations because you're taking a break from coding type of thing. You're having this philosophical session in the way that Elon Musk has it with his brother. And they talk about how we're all in a simulation, right? Like right. maybe it was that level of conversation, but I don't think it was ever part of a, like a strategic, all right, let's do this in the boardroom with a whiteboard. And like, you know, how do we deal with this implication? Well, whatever, let's go for it. You know right. what I mean? Like, no, I completely agree. I, you know, I mean, how do you even know? You just, you don't even know for some of these things. I think I, perhaps in retrospect, some things will be obvious, but like, like I, like, I don't even know, like, okay, let's talk about AR and that's a new thing. And it's like, I, I I don't know what the implications are for society where what happens with everything you do may or may not have a, a layer augmented on top of it that you may or may not know about. I mean, come on. So I Trojan horse you a little bit. I Trojan horse you a little bit because I I have I nope. think it's actually a much You're better. Good. I overcame it. I think there's a much much better analogy than the tobacco industry, which is what the rest of the news media seem to be going with. Which is okay. They're McDonald's. McDonald's had this amazing. They, right. they, so I don't know if you watched. I just watched the movie The Founder. Um, oh, that movie! I love that movie. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So seriously, do you like that movie? Yeah, I liked it. There's okay. like, there's downsides. My wife to it. hates it. She thought it was horrible. I was on a bus. This was 4HP. I was on a bus traveling and I was talking with a guy and we were talking about the founder and he was like, oh my gosh, I just, I couldn't stand the founder. And I was like, what are you talking about? The movie's fantastic. Wait, for, for I'm a total founder know, rooter. The founder is, it's the story of Ray Kroc and how he started McDonald's. It's fantastic. And watch it and realize the man is a legend and a hero and it's awesome. Now granted, he does make choices just like, the the creators make choices. I think everyone makes mistakes. I like I applaud him for knowing what he wanted <laughs> and for getting after it, for having the vision, for having the gumption. So I Oh man, no, dude, the this inventors are the thing. bad guys. Come on. So this is my thing. This is my thing. <sighs> yes. I, I I have tend, an opinion about that movie. I tend to I tend to think it was a really interesting I actually th- don't think they made right. I thought they 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 gave Ray Kroc like a really reasonable, like, uh, I thought he was really reasonable in the movie. Yeah. I actually think part of yeah. the reason the movie didn't do better is because they didn't make him this arch evil. Like he came Fair across enough. as the creators were being unreasonable. He had to do, he tried to work with them when they didn't work with him. Dude, he got, preach he got, it. 
So that's so so that's that's where yeah, you get it. You get as it. opposed to you can be my brother. As opposed to I when I watch uh, the Social Network, um, uh-huh. a more entertaining movie. Even though I think the story of the Social Network in reality, the creating of Facebook with Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, probably is more like what happened with McDonald's, where yeah, he did some shady stuff. I mean, he was he was young and and, and pretty dumb. But yeah. I think all in all, there was an, it wasn't nearly as evil as that movie made it out to seem. Yeah, I think, that's true. I think if you had been there and had watched those conversations, you would have been like, yeah, Mark was just working really hard. He just, he never stopped working really hard. And the people around him weren't willing to work as hard as he was. And yeah, it makes him come across as a real dirt bag, but because he would just race ahead of people and keep carrying the baton and he would take ideas and run with them. And, um, but my point is, is that, that when McDonald's first happened, there was this major cultural shift and the movie does a good job of showing this of how like restaurants weren't really a thing and how they turned restaurants like fast food, how fast food became what it is and how yeah. It took off and it was this great innovation and it was for families and it was for, for, for good food at cheap prices. It was good for the economy. It was, it was, it was this real innovation and people loved it. People loved McDonald's forever. Even when we started to understand that there was this fundamental issue with eating that much fast food, they were engineering the food to be tastier so that more people would eat the food. They actually, um, in, in Ray Kroc's bio- biography, he talks about the fries and, um, and there's actually another fantastic podcast by Malcolm Gladwell, where he dives into McDonald's fries. And he, the title of the podcast is like, How McDonald's Broke My Heart or something like that. And, um, and they actually talk about how the original fry uh, formula or whatever, like it was addictive. And Ray Kroc was like, the secret's the fries. He's like, yeah. it's not a side garnish. It's not just a filler. Like the fries are special. And he was meticulous about the way they made their fries like he was like you do not deviate you do not change this is how it must be done and he understood like people come for the fries they're addicting there is nothing which by the way i've never had there's kind of sad now that i think about it you never had the original mcdonald fries oh they changed the formula uh no that's not true i i think they changed it when i was like five Mm. so i probably did i just don't remember yeah, and I just, it's one of those things where I, where I, I sit there and I go, there was a time where McDonald's was hailed as like the greatest thing that America had ever produced. And, Still there. And well, <laughs> you know, and, and it, but, but it was things like Super Size Me that really... Yeah, turn the corner, and McDonald's is still this enormous juggernaut of a company. They're still huge. They're still fundamental to big parts of the economies all across the world. They're still really successful, and they've changed. But our and they're still are, really innovative too, yeah, and a lot yeah, of things that yeah, they do. Yeah, and their food is still really tasty. It doesn't taste anything like a hamburger, but it tastes really good. <laughs> that's not what they're going for. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and the thing is, is that like, and I think that's what we're going to look at of, as Facebook in a long time. And it'll be the uh-huh. same perspective is we'll acknowledge the fact that it's not, it's like fast food. It's not good for you. Um, but it's also food. It can be good for you. And they're like, Facebook has uses, but if you, if you're not careful with it, um, it can have real bad ramifications. And just like the obesity epidemic in America, I think we'll have the consequences of uh, social media America. You know, and even if Facebook isn't the one that mm. I think they will be, like in the same way that McDonald's is the, is the king, is still the king, um, I think Facebook will be, even if there's other competitors that are nearly as dominant. Um, yeah, Burger King would feel about you saying that. But yeah. Um, well, Subway is what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, I was just singing. Oh, we just called king. McDonald's the king. Wow. Oh man, it's true. No, it's true. I totally agree, and I think it's interesting. Like, I actually think we're also. I think we're. It feels weird. I don't know if this will happen, but it feels like we're on the precipice of some potentially big, um, like antitrust stuff coming down the pipe for some of these big companies. Like it feels like we're having the equivalent of the Rockefeller, Morgan, and who is the third guy, where uh, they just had a ridiculous percentage. Carnegie. Carnegie, thank you, a ridiculous percentage of the wealth in the world, 
And it was because they had figured out this whole steel industry and oil and like, you know, vertical this... integration. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's almost like we're going through this all over again. And our, our current system is so woefully inadequate at uh, handling what's happening. We're just like, they're just letting it happen. And what was the new stat now? Like the number three, the top three, richest people in the world have the same amount of wealth as the bottom 50%. You just yeah. go, whoa. Now granted, one of them is Warren Buffett, but the other two are tech guys, uh, mm-hmm. Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, by the way. And uh, and it's just like, I don't know, you get this sense where the sentiment is also turned towards these companies where, I, you know, I, I think at one time, like plantation crops, right? Like, oh yeah, going back to your cigarette analogy, like that was a staple in the U S that was why we're going to war and defending yeah. things. And yeah. that's why we have we were, slavery. We were and now it's like as Americans. Yeah. And I think there's the same, the sense about, Oh, we got technology and we're proud of it. And we invented things like these social networks. And I think there's been this shift where you're like, you know what, maybe there's something else here that's more important. And, and yeah, maybe some of these things we invented aren't great. Uh, just, if we let it go completely unfettered, I, I think quite a few of these. Oh, dude, I, let's I, regulate social networks. Yes. Turn it into a utility. Yeah, I don't well, even know I, what that means. Like the post office, you know. Okay. Let the. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but. Well, and I think I think I think the first I've, to me it's become what this obvious. means is my kids will pr- should probably play less on their phones. Is probably what it means. Well, to me, I think what we'll probably see is in in twenty years. 20 to 30 years, we'll look at the giant tech companies. They'll still be around. They'll still be important yeah. to American society, but we'll have the same attitude towards them as we do fast food, where fast food is still incredibly important. There are fast food restaurants, really successful fast food restaurants at every corner because they're still really important to the American economy. But we look at them with yeah. disgust and disdain. And, um, and I think- I people, don't. For the I think, record, I don't. I love McDonald's. Well, I would give- I ate what, there yesterday. Yeah, but what about Jack? I'll admit it. <laughs> what about yeah her? they've got all sorts of issues yeah, i like exactly. McDo- i like mcdonald's yeah <laughs> wait, 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 wait. i like to i like to we have two choices in our household for the record mcdonald's or arby's like, okay that's okay. the question do we want the straight fries we or the were, curly fries we were just having a conversation last night about kfc and how like there is hardly any, there's hardly anything that like there's nothing in fast food that i will crave as much and regret as much immediately after. Uh, like, I'll get in the mood for KFC and be like, oh my gosh, like, I gotta get some in like now. And like the next meal I get will be KFC. I will eat it and I will be done and think, it was disgusting, I don't have to do this again. Like, I, I, if I never eat KFC again, I'll be fine. <laughs> I, have, I have the same reaction around Taco Bell every time. I don't, I don't get like the desires to eat it, but every time I do, I just go, oh, why'd I do that? That was a mistake. Unfortunately, and I, maybe I feel that way about, do you feel that way about when you like, when you share a status update, do you go, Ugh, why did I do that? I regularly type out a status <laughs> update and then delete it and just think, Interesting. No, nobody needs this. Nobody wants to know this. I like the, almost the only time this is not super healthy, but almost the only time that I tweet or do status updates is when I'm like a beer and a half in. And something ah. interesting happens where I'm just loose enough to be willing to hit the send button. But like, I'm not, I haven't had enough where I'm like distracted with more entertaining things. <laughs> like, huh. I, yeah, I, I very, very, but I, I, I would say a couple of times a week, I will like write out a status and then think this is dumb. Nobody cares. And then I just move on. Like interesting. And yeah, I, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't visit Facebook as often anymore i visit twitter a lot i also don't tweet them a lot either i'm more of a lurker just in general yeah. but huh i noticed with with my Reddit. wife's addicted we've had conversations about it actually because oh, yeah. she she was a last thing you do when you before going to bed be on facebook and then first thing she would do when she woke up would check facebook now she's not checking her own stuff she's following other people's stuff and right you know wants to know what other people are posting and that's where we had a serious conversation and was like oh, dude is this healthy like is this really what you should be doing right out the gate for your day? And is this how you should be finishing it? Thought about reading a book? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, it's <laughs> I, I wake up to Reddit, and that's probably not super healthy. Um, like my Reddit is my Facebook; it's my my social network that I yeah, that's fair. We'll get will I get wrapped into? But that's a reasonable spending. I wake time. up to email. How does that? There's, how does there's that useful factor? things right that's now. Just sad. Yeah, that's what that is. That's just oh, 
I don't, I don't read my emails. So I've been at work for at least an hour and a half. Don't tell my boss. Though. That's smart, dude. I, you know what? I, I did an experiment like that and my life was much happier. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's the problem with these addictive things is that you'll stop and you'll think, yeah, this, I'm probably better for this. And then you'll come back and be like, but you'll just fall back into it. And I think that's the danger with it all. Um, so I guess my long and short huh. is, I don't think, I think we're going to discover that Facebook, I think we'll long for long, we'll know that Facebook knew what they were doing there. There are, can be some terrible consequences to it. Maybe it'll be pro- difficult to prove cause at causation, but I think the end result is going to be, we'll have a similar attitude towards social media as we do fast food. I think they're, I think they're learning like we are. They probably have more data and scientists um, <laughs> studying it, but they're learning. I like with the fake news thing, right? Like that snuck up on them. Clearly Mark Zuckerberg was not ready for that. Yeah. And you know, by his very first comments, what are you talking about? No, we don't. You know, and now he's like, Hey, we're going to be hiring a lot more people to help with this. And it may affect our profitability in the future, which like that's, he's just learning as they go. And I think this is a similar thing where, like they don't know what the addictive properties yeah. are of this and how it actually affects people. I think they're studying it and they're actively looking into it. I don't know if I, I don't know if they're actively trying to answer that specific question, but they're probably hitting around it a bunch in order to find out other things. And yeah. they probably do genuinely have concerns at this point, where it's like, okay, we're what can we do and, and not do ethically? And and I have a feeling that Sean Parker told everybody what they what they were their deepest darkest suspicions because he knew it made him sound more. Yeah, and, and next week we're gonna learn about his new startup that right. you know, is the anti-network or something like that. Yeah. Who knows? Um, crazy, crazy. So, um, what do you think? Are you addicted to Facebook? Yeah. Let us know, guess where? Right. On Facebook. <laughs> or another social network, we're okay with that too. Uh, yeah, crazy. So everybody, thanks for listening. We do appreciate it. Thanks for being addicted to the show, actually. We really appreciate that. And we knew that you would be, and it's been purposely designed and um, formatted for maximum stickiness and addictiveness. So the way you feel right now is normal. It's all good. Uh, you can check out all the links. Should I say that? I, I, is that sound incriminating? Is that bad? Uh, you can check out all the links to this show on furloughbros.com slash 313. That's right, that's 313. You can also subscribe on iTunes and Google Play. We want to say thanks, Sean, for causing problems and for Erica Pandy for um, getting out all those uh, important snippets for us so we can discuss about it. Also, Leslie Walker and Maggie Fox. Finally, uh, we want to say that this podcast is sponsored by listeners like you and stopwatches. Stop and watch this. So uh, with that, I am James Furlow and my <sighs> legacy f- style phone carrying brother is Matthew Furlow. And so we will talk next time.